Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be going into more detail on the Grid Boss. So I did talk about the Grid Boss a bit in the last video I did when I wired up the Flex Boss 21, the 18K PV, and the Grid Boss all together. So I did talk about how a lot of people are going to be hooking that in. Typically, in my situation, I'm off grid, so I have it wired in a bit different than most people will be, I think. So yeah, I'm gonna show more detail inside of the Grid Boss, and hopefully, if you guys have any questions, it'll answer them when I show you how everything is going to be typically wired anyway. There is a few different ways to wire it, um, but yeah, I'll show, I think, what the most typical case would be. Also, and I already have this working, so through the magic of video, I'm doing this first, but I have the 12K PV hooked up to the system also. It's not on this wall, though, so I'll show you how I wired it in, and it is now feeding into the Grid Boss as well. Yeah, but it's across the room with a different battery bank and all of that is feeding into the same grid boss into the house. I'm gonna get started here with the grid boss first and then I'll show you guys the 12K PV wired into it. All right, so start with the grid boss. I actually did some of this before. Like I actually recorded some of this and while I was editing, I almost put myself to sleep. So I'm gonna try to make this rapid fire here. Outside there's indicator lights based off what the grid boss is doing, whether it's running some of the smart loads or running from the grid, but you can see I'm only on hybrid mode. That's because this is off grid. So all I'm doing is powering this unit and then the power from it's headed straight to the house. Also on the right side of the unit, you'll see the wireless dongle all the way at the top. And then this is a shutoff. So this is a master shutoff switch. So I've heard some people in other videos call it a PV shutoff, but it is not. Although technically, if you have panels wired into the system, you could have a rapid shutdown capability with this, but no, this is a, a shutoff since no PV actually comes into the unit. So there's no solar coming into this. That does remind me though of what I really like about this grid boss setup. It's that the wiring in the inverters can be extremely simple now, just battery and a feeder, a feed coming from that to the grid boss and then the PV. But then in the grid boss itself, it's simple too, because you don't have battery and PV and all that in there. So both installations are way cleaner. This has plenty of space for all the wiring. I've got all three hybrid inverters hooked up. I'll show you the 12K PV in just a minute, but that's for the 12K PV right there. And then all of these ports can be hooked up and you'd still have plenty of space left over. Over here on the door, you can scan this to get any kind of documentation you need. And it also says your wire gauges, it shows some of the relays that I'm going to mention here in a minute. I mentioned this in my last video, but the Grid Boss itself is a pretty simple device, but complex at the same time. On the top, you've got four smart ports. And like I mentioned in the last video, those could be used for multiple different things. And they could be set based off state of charge or voltage, whatever. So you could run all kinds of things with that. But also, you, if you've got a grid tied system already, you can utilize these capture some of that power that's been going back to the grid for no reason at all and use it to charge batteries and everything. So this is an AC coupled system as well. Like I mentioned, you've got three different inverter hybrid ports here. So any of the EG4 hybrids on the far right is where the grid input would be. This unit can be put outdoors too. If you don't have space for it in the house, don't want to take up space, then this can be put out of the house. So this is where your meter is going to feed into actually. It's going to go straight from the meter, then through this. That's going to be the most typical use case. EG4 provides the specs on the 200 amp switch that you'll need right here, the Eaton switch. So if you look at the electricity in the grid boss flowing like water, then the relays are going to be dams that open and close to allow the water through. That's probably the easiest way to look at it. So after your power comes in through the meter, through this 200 amp switch, the modes that you use are going to depend on how the electricity is going to flow, even to the smart ports as well. So there's relays for them. If you have the cover off, you can see two different lugs here. So they've got backup loads, non-backup loads. I have everything wired into these hybrid inverters and my power comes straight from my backup loads to my house because again, I'm off grid. But if somebody didn't have that, if they want to put something in non-backup loads, those would be the loads that they don't want to be powered by the system here. So the manual mentions, for example, if you had some really large loads, you don't want the inverters to be powering, you could utilize that. I don't want to forget the generator here. You can also have a generator feed this because the Flex Boss series does not have a generator port in it. 
So this is where you are going to feed that if you want to utilize a generator. I usually recommend for people to use a charge burner, but this is an option for those people with some really large generators, backup house generators, stuff like that. And then you do have the manual bypass. So if you want to replace an inverter on the system, if you want to isolate the system completely, remember you've got power coming in from the grid right here, straight from the meter through here. So for right now, it's feeding into this system. Everything's sort of blending together. But if, for any reason you want to isolate the inverters and the system completely, this switch would go off. This would slide over. It's a lockout switch. You would switch this on and then essentially the house would be running like it normally did. So meter through the switch, through this bypass, and you would bypass the inverters and the whole system completely. So I'm gonna show you guys some configurations the manual has in it real quick so you guys can get an idea of the way the power flows through the unit. So they give a grid cell back configuration. I can show you guys that on the picture. And again, if you think about it like water, you can see how the arrows are flowing in that picture. Then they have an off-grid mode. Again, you can see how some of the relays are shut. Some are open to allow that flow to and from. And then they even have a generator example they show in the manual as well. And then there's a, an example of the smart loads, how they're going to operate and how the relays are open for those smart loads that you've allowed. And then here's an example of the manual bypass I mentioned before. And notice how the power is flowing straight from the grid right back through the manual bypass and you don't see any power coming from smart loads, anything like that. So everything is basically cut off. They even give an AC coupled mode. So they're showing you examples of that too. The manual is really good. And I, again, I, like I normally do, I'll leave the link in the description to this. And I usually tell people to check out the manual and you can check out the specs too. But in this case for the grid boss, definitely check out the manual and just look at the flow of power. That's gonna be the easiest way to understand this device. And then lastly, this wasn't very rapid fire, but it's as close as I could get. This unit has built-in CTs, so you're not gonna need the CTs on your inverters anymore because this is going to monitor the power straight from that meter through to your inverters, or if you're selling back to the grid, it'll monitor the power going back out. So this is the gateway, this is the brain, this is the hub of the whole system, essentially. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I hooked the 12K PV up to this. So the 12K PV is actually still on the other wall, but how I'm going to utilize it with the other system just to test it and show you guys is I have this hooked up to a separate battery bank and I'm going to be utilizing an RV cord here. So a 50 amp plug and it's going to go over to the grid boss into the third hybrid input. I'll show you here in just a second. So that RV cord goes into a 50 amp plug right here. And then that is going to go into the third hybrid input right here. This is not how basically anybody is going to be doing it. But for testing, it'll work to show you guys that all three inverters of a different size can work on the grid boss. So for batteries, I have the wall mount battery. I still have the three EG4 LLS batteries in that little rack there. And then over here, I actually have a new rack that I still need to review. I have basically all kinds of batteries in this cabinet. And it's actually a pretty neat cabinet. I like the look of it. Uh, if I do the review, I'll show the downsides to it, but it fits the eco-worthy battery in there nicely. Uh, anyway, uh, this is what is gonna be powering the 12K PV for this test. And that's what's been powering my test wall for a while now. I think I've got a link for this if anyone's interested in this cabinet. You can do this in the monitor app also, but I just wanted to show you guys when you go down here, this is the grid boss setting. So I've already updated the LCD and the firmware on here. So the LCD screen, the firmware, and that will show the grid boss setting. And when you click that, you actually hear a relay click. All right, so I got it. So that was actually not hard at all. Right here, this is the parallel communication cable that comes with the inverter. And I actually have a 50 foot cord on the end of it running over. Let me show you guys. Let me try to get it here. So this is going all the way over to the 12K PV. So the, they actually show a diagram on how to wire these in with the parallel cables to the grid boss, but actually I didn't do it that way. So I've got the 12K PV running all the way to here to communicate with the 18K PV. And this communication wire goes all the way to the grid boss. 
And then I have a separate here on this Flex Boss 21, and that also goes to the Grid Boss. So all of them are hooked together. The 18K PV is showing, we've got, we're not using a lot right now, like 1.2, 1 1.1 kilowatts, not a lot coming from battery at the moment. We're, my wife's gonna start cooking soon though. And then over here on the 12K PV side, everything is hooked in and we're showing basically the same thing now. We've got 1.2 kilowatts coming from solar. I don't know how, it is extremely, nasty outside right now but we do have a little bit coming in so yeah it was not hard at all to get these hooked up together because i would already done the 18 kpv hooked into the system the main thing to remember is and let me see if i can get the setting to show you the main thing to remember is when you're in the grid boss settings all the way at the bottom of advanced is where it's at in on the screen anyway you can get it in the monitoring app too pretty easy the main thing to remember is to set the role of the other inverters, not the main, to slave. If you don't do that, you're going to see them all, all the relays clicking and they're battling each other, trying to fight for the master position. <laughs> so, and uh, you don't have to ask me how I know. I've done that twice now. But anyway, yeah, so make sure to set the role of, so this is a 12K PV here. Make sure to set it to slave. I've got the 18K PV on slave also, and then the Flex Boss 21 is master. But that's about it, guys. Again, this is not a conventional setup because I'm using that RV plug. But that's pretty much it when it comes to paralleling these inverters. I have three different inverters now running to the Grid Boss, powering loads at the same time. And again, on the 12 kPV, we are not utilizing the CTs because the Grid Boss has the CTs in it, and we're utilizing the Grid input because it's actually using that for the output to the grid boss because it is a hybrid tell you what though once you've done this once it's actually a simple process so whether you're going to be using the grid boss 21 two of those an 18 kpv or if you're going to get a 12 kpv because they're cheaper just to supplement some of the power the main thing to remember like i said is that slave setting and then as far as i'm concerned i think you can just daisy chain the communication cables for paralleling to the grid boss However you want to hook them together, they're all going to send the info back to the grid boss based off what I've seen. By the way, I know this is a ridiculous amount of battery cable in this, but I didn't want to cut it because I've got another project coming up soon. <laughs> so I didn't want to slice this cable off. So it just, I know it looks sort of odd having that much in there, but this was just for the test. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave, since it's been so cloudy for so long, I'm going to leave the 12 kPV running on this battery bank to be able to supplement some power from a different battery bank. So this is actually pretty neat. It's a neat setup. I'm gonna splice this into the video. While I was editing, EG4 was nice enough to contact me and give me some details on the last FlexBoss 21. If you guys remember, if you saw my last video, the first one I put up failed within like 10 minutes. And my guess was shipping damage. I showed you guys the dent on the top and turns out I was correct. They sent me some photos. I'll show you guys some pictures from the report. It gives a description of the specific board that was damaged. And what happened was when it hit the top, nothing was actually damaged on the top. I don't think there's a little space there, but what it did was it buckled the back. So I don't know if you can tell from the photo I'm gonna put on the screen, but it buckled the back side of the inverter. So when that happened, it actually forced one of the boards kinked one of the boards there and fried it. So I'm honestly surprised it started up at all to begin with, but I figured I would put that in the video here in case any of you were curious uh, about the last one. I said I would try to put it in there, and yeah, like I said, they were nice enough to send me that. It did give me some insight into what those look like, those analysis or damage analysis, whatever they refer to it as. It was pretty neat because the analysis had everything I had mentioned in the report there, but it also had everything they found as far as the board and pictures and all that. So yeah, guys, not a super long one, but yeah, I did get a lot of questions on which inverters can work with the Grid Boss. So that would be any EG4 hybrid inverter. So that would include the 12 kPV, 18 kPV, Flex Boss 21, and now the Flex Boss 18. The Grid Boss works out all the details. So it doesn't matter what lineup you've got there. It's three of those inverters. So if it's three Flex Boss 21s, if it's three 18 kPVs, it will work out all the details. So you can do up to three. How it decides the loads to use is pretty interesting. And I've got some screenshots or some video recordings. I don't think I got one of the Flex Boss, but the 12 kPV, the 18 kPV, 
my wife was making lunch and I looked, we were around 11,000 watts of usage, something like that. And it wasn't split evenly between them. And I guess that's because the grid boss has that logic in it to where it can decide how much to pull from each inverter depending on its size. So the 12 kPV was doing like 1700 watts, 15, something like that. 18 kPV was doing around two or 3000 and this was taking up the rest. I'm not sure how it decides that, but that's part of the intelligence of the system. Some of that may depend on how much solar is coming in on each unit also. But yeah, as far as the wiring for the grid boss, uh, in my wiring, and I showed it in the last video, I'm basically, all of these inverters are feeding in to the breakers on the hybrid port, and then they're going out that backup loads lug to a sub panel and then straight to my house because I'm off grid. Like I said, the most common use is gonna be, the grid boss is gonna be right after your meter. So I've actually seen some people that are building their homes and they know they plan to install a flex boss or a 18 kPV, something like that. They wanna install a hybrid unit. So they go ahead and put the grid boss in line right then while they're wiring. So that's gonna be probably the most irritating part of it or the most painful part for people is getting the wire from the meter through the grid boss. Because after that, once you have that done, you can hook these up anytime to the grid boss. The only thing you're gonna be doing with these is hooking them directly to the grid boss because all the rest of it's done already. And I showed it in my last video, but a picture of basically everything the grid boss is replacing. So a lot of different uh, backup panels, all that. If you wire it the way the manual shows, then you can save a lot of wall space. Essentially, it's shrunk down to just the grid boss and whatever units you've got here. Plus you get the four smart loads as sort of a bonus anyway. So, you know, you get the hub between the inverters, you get to save all that wall space, you get a fused disconnect, but you do get the smart loads if you ever plan on using them. Even if you don't think you'll use them right away, like why not have them? You may use them two years down the road or one year down the road if you come up with an item you wanna power, power part-time or something like that. So I guess if I was gonna sum up the last month, what is it? It's been over a month, I think, month and a half, two months, with this whole setup here. I guess if I was to put it in one word, it would be uneventful. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, nothing's gone on. Like it's powered everything. It's, it's the quietest I've ever had a system because it doesn't really need to turn on much. As far as the fans, like I never really hear anything anymore. The With the PV coming in, in order to hear the fans all the time, I would probably need 30,000 watts of PV. And there I am, I have like 14,500 watts, something like that of PV. So split between these inverters, like it will come on, the fans will come on, but just not very often. This is actually one of the most productive times of year for me as far as PV. I know the sun is not fully out there yet, but I'm not using AC right now. So usually I'm charged probably around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm fully charged. So at that point, I'll charge the batteries up on the test wall or whatever else I can dump load in. I still don't have an EV, so I can't do that yet. Yeah, my overall opinion of the new lineup, so the Grid Boss, I, they put a lot of thought into that. I think EG4 did a really good job with that. So yeah, I guess to summarize, I do really like the Grid Boss. I like the Flex Boss too. This overall is a little quieter than the 18K PV, so different tone. Uh, it comes on at the same time, so 6,000 watts. The fans will come on, just a little quieter overall. So this does have beefed up elements, like I mentioned in the last video, over the 18K PV. So you can do much more output with solar. So you can go up to 16,000 watts while you have enough sunshine to do it. So yeah, it's not just the Grid Boss lineup, but I like the fact that they've gone the extra mile with the Flex Boss lineup too. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. I'll leave all of this in the description like I usually do. And if nothing else, look at the manual on these items. So if you click on the links that I have, you can follow it down. Usually you'll see manual and specs towards the bottom of the screen off of any of the links. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Plus you get all the smarts. This is active. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you watching. Like I always do, I'll leave the description 